Hi there everyone. Today we'll be reviewing the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate 4, a four-person ultralight tent that can stand up to the rigors of four-season use. Thanks for joining us everyone. Today we're continuing our new series on family winter camping. Our first video in the series was Halcyon Days, a short movie about the joys to be found camping out in the wilderness in these stressful times. Now we'll begin getting a bit deeper on a few specific camping considerations. One of our earliest videos was our top 12 tips for cold weather camping. That covered a broad set of topics. With this, our new series, we're taking the opposite approach. We're choosing one specific topic to examine more closely. For those of you new to our channel, you may not know that we are a family of four. Myself, I'm Jason, my wife Christina, and our twin boys, Connor and Cade, who at the time of this recording are six years old. And we're in a family that likes to get into the backcountry, and we do so in all seasons. So it can be a challenge to find a tent that can withstand the harshness of winter, fit the four of us, plus the dog, and is light enough to not weigh me and my wife down since our kids are so young that we can't really expect them to carry a lot of weight. It had been a fool's errand for a while, but with the advancements in Dyneema composite fabric, a strong and light and waterproof material, we finally found a tent that checks all of those boxes, and we wanted to share our thoughts on that tent with you. So today we're reviewing the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate 4 Tent. So this is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate 4, a pyramid style tent using one center pole. One of the advantages of this pyramid tent is its adaptability. If you place it as a base camp tent, for instance, you can simply cap the pyramid over a dugout pit of snow, or if the snow isn't that deep, you can set it up with the bottom edges low to the ground to keep the wind from whipping in when it's cold outside. Now, if there is snow, but not enough to dig out, you can pile the snow up along those bottom edges of the tent to help create additional insulation and keep that breeze out. In the warmer seasons, you simply pitch the tent with the edges higher up off the ground, letting more of the corner guy lines out. This will allow a breeze to flow through and keep the temperature down when it's hotter outside. Now to allow the edges of your tent to come up off of or cinch down to the ground, you need an adjustable center pole so that you can alter the peak height of your tent. Hyperlite provides these two plastic straps used to lash two trekking poles together so that they work as one single system. And you can adjust the pole height by adjusting how you strap the poles together or by lengthening the individual poles themselves if you have adjustable trekking poles. Now to be honest, this is one of the downsides of the tent. The requirement of lashing two poles together is significantly more annoying than having a tent that can use just one trekking pole. Getting the trekking poles to cinch tightly together takes some thinking to keep the straps from slipping. I find that keeping the straps just above the points on your poles that expand in diameter, either due to it being a grip or it's where the extension mechanism resides, that helps stop that slippage from happening. But in addition, your trekking poles are not used to having constant pressure placed down on them. And I've found that if you extend the trekking poles themselves, they can slowly sink back to a non-extended length under the constant pressure and weight of your tent. In effect, you're lowering your tent ceiling over the course of the night. Now you can get around these trekking pole nuisances by being specific about your lash points like I described and not extending your poles, but rather stacking up hard materials like rocks or some such under the base if you want to raise the height. Or you can get a carbon fiber pole to replace the trekking poles, although Hyperlite doesn't make any. The most popular third-party poles seem to come from a Utah company, Ruta Lakura, and you can get two different diameters. The 710 pole is 0.71 inches in diameter and weighs 7.1 ounces. And you're looking to get the 75 inch height pole, which means that it can adjust from 71 to 79 inches. Now the 820 pole is 0.82 inches in diameter, weighs about 10 ounces. And again, you're looking for the 75 inch pole, which gives you that 71 to 79 inch adjustability. Now, while not being able to use just one trekking pole as the center pole for the tent does create some problems we need to solve, the plus side is that you need a longer center pole because you have a higher peak height. This makes the tent pretty tall, in fact, tall enough for many people to be able to stand fully upright when they're in the center of the tent. 
Additionally, the taller the peak height means the steeper your side walls become, making the tent better at shedding off snow, as well as keeping the walls off of you if you're sleeping up against the side of the tent. The steep walls, coupled with the 10 foot by 10 foot floor, makes a very roomy and livable space. There's been plenty of room for us with two adults, two kids, a dog, and all of our gear. Now, if we were four adults, or at least four adult-sized people, we could still all easily fit inside of the tent. And the single wall lets in enough light that I can actually charge my electronics using my solar panel from inside of the tent when it's a sunny day. Because of the minimalist construction, however, there aren't any pockets for storage. Of course, this is done to keep the tent weight down, so this compromise in livability is done for the sake of having a tent that, for us, weighs about 1.4 pounds with its stuff sack and which packs down to a 13 by 8 by 6 inch package. Of course, where this tent's packability really comes from is its construction using Dyneema Composite Fabric, or DFC. DFC has a number of advantages over typical nylon or sill nylon fabrics. First and foremost, it is far lighter. For a four-person tent, the fabric choice alone can easily account for half a pound. It's also more tear resistant, about six times more so. DFC is fully waterproof, and the Ultimate 4 requires no seam sealing, so nylon will eventually get waterlogged and oftentimes does leak at the seams. DFC doesn't degrade from extended exposure to ultraviolet light from the sun either, the way nylon-based fabrics can. Of course, there are downsides too. DFC is certainly more expensive. It also has very low stretch which can be good for keeping walls from sagging in, but also means that you need to be precise when you're setting up your tent. And DFC, while extremely tear resistant, isn't as puncture resistant. So if you're thinking about a tent floor, think about what type of ground you'd be pitching on. Snow, no big deal. Dry ground, maybe something you need to be a bit more careful about. Speaking of tent floors, this is another element of the Ultimate 4 that can either be a blessing or a burden, depending on how you look at it. The Ultimate 4 doesn't come with a floor. Now, that could be annoying for people who are used to a self-contained singular tent system, but it does allow for a modular approach where you can get inserts and mix and match your tent setup for the specific needs of a specific trip. You can get a full mesh insert with no floor, a full mesh insert with a floor, and a half insert that's mesh with a floor. Now, obviously, adding any of these is gonna add weight and volume to your pack. That is one of the downsides. The full mesh insert with no floor weighs in at 17 ounces. The full mesh insert with the full floor weighs 27.5 ounces, and the half insert with the floor weighs 19 ounces. Now, if you're out in the warm months and not having to worry about insects, it's kind of hard to beat the light weight of just the outer walls. But if you're out in insect season, then the mesh with no floor makes a lot of sense. For the winter time, I actually like the mesh with the full flooring. It provides a few advantages. First, any flooring is going to help stop water seepage if you're melting snow with your body heat. But this floor is also a bathtub floor, meaning it wraps up around the sides. So any snow that might be blowing in from underneath your tent walls is going to tend to get stopped by that bathtub walling. Now, second, as you probably know in the wintertime, as you exhale and that water vapor moves up to the top of the tent, it refreezes once it comes to rest on the tent walls. Now, when the sun hits the tent in the morning, that frozen condensation turns to liquid again and it drips onto you and all of your stuff. Well, the mesh on the walls and the inserts is a very fine mesh and the water drops tend to run down the sides into the ground rather than through the mesh and onto you and your equipment. And for two-person alpine style ascents that I do sometimes, I can use the half insert and I end up with a full vestibule, which is excellent for storing all of that bulky climbing equipment that my partner and I might need. As far as ease of setup goes, once you get past the need to potentially lash two trekking poles together, it's an incredibly easy tent to get standing. You simply stake the four corners and tension the guy lines, which is easy to do with the line locks that are integrated with the tent. Now slide the insert that you're using, if you're using one, under, and then place the top of the tent pole into the reinforced pocket at the peak of the tent. Set the base of the pole, and then lengthen the pole until the tent is taut. You can then attach the insert corners to the corners of the tent walls via the D-clips. You can then state down any additional guy lines. As I mentioned in the opening, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Ultimate 4 checks all the boxes we need it to check in terms of it being a true four-person, four-season, lightweight option. It is a very pricey option, though. Therefore, it becomes a question of value. Is it worth it? Now, if you need a tent that can adapt to different uses, then I think it is. 
for us, we can use this tent in six different scenarios. So that's six different shelters I don't need to buy. One, of course, it's a four person warm weather tent. Two, but by pitching it low to the ground and potentially piling snow around the edges, it's also a four season tent. Three, I can use it as an expedition base camp, capping on top of a dugout snow shelter. Four, it's light enough to be a two person alpine tent. And when I use the half insert, it's got a nice vestibule. Five, is also light enough to be a backpacking tent for the whole family. And lastly, six, it's a lighter option than carrying four emergency shelters when the whole family gets deep into the backcountry. So hopefully this review has been helpful to you. If so, please hit that like button and please do share this video with any friends who may be interested. Or feel free to comment with any questions or to share your own experiences with family tents. And don't forget that you can find additional information related to this and all of our videos by visiting our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. You can also ring that bell to subscribe to our channel and you'll be alerted every time we post a new video. We produce how-to and educational videos like this one, as well as short films about our family adventures. We release a new video every week. And as always, if you have any ideas for content you'd like to see on the channel, you can let us know those ideas in the comments section as well. In the meantime, keep on getting more out of that big outside.